Hello, welcome back. The theme for the message for August 30th, 2020 is Living by Better Rules. Our first reading is from Romans 12, verses 9 through 16. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. And our gospel lesson today is from Matthew 15, selected verses. The Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands before they eat. He answered them, And why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For the sake of your tradition, you make void the word of God. You hypocrites! Isaiah prophesied rightly about you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. Then he called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. For what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. May God bless this reading to our living and our understanding. I can remember just a few months ago when washing my hands only took 10 seconds. But then this March, we all learned another better way to hold the hands under the faucet, pick up the soap, get the hands good and soapy, and then set down the soap and rub the hands together for 20 seconds. I still find myself counting. Some people have a song, some people say a prayer, some people have a poem or a joke they tell themselves to give that time span. Most of us have it so internalized that we can wash our hands and be thinking about other things and know when we have washed them long enough. Then we rinse our hands. If, if we're in a public place, we might reach for a paper towel to turn off the faucet and perhaps another to open the door on the way out. We've learned the importance of clean hands. Clean hands have been important for a very long time. Our gospel lesson today opens with the Pharisees challenging Jesus, asking him, why don't your followers follow the tradition of the elders? Why do they eat without washing their hands? They sound like my mother did long ago. But washing hands was understood to be very important. It was part of a much larger understanding of what was clean and what was unclean. If you look back into the books of Leviticus and Numbers, there are long lists of laws, and many of them have to do with this distinction, what is clean and what is unclean, what is pure and what is 
impure and what to do when you come in contact with something that is unclean. A dead animal is unclean. If somebody had to handle a dead animal, then they were to go wash their clothing and wash themselves and then wait until evening and they would be clean again. If they touched a dead body, they were to wash themselves and wash their clothes and wait a week and then they would be considered clean again. Certain kinds of food were considered to be clean and others were considered to be unclean. The clean foods were the things that people could eat. The unclean foods were the things to be avoided. Illnesses were considered to be unclean. Leprosy was considered to be an uncleanness. If someone had leprosy, they had to live outside of the community. Mildew on a wall or mold on a wall was considered to be unclean. If you were to touch it, you had to, again, change your clothes and wash your body and wait until evening. And if the house could not be cleansed of the mildew, it had to be torn down. The words for leprosy and the words for mildew were the same word. They were considered to be much the same as each other. The prophets spoke of the possibility of the temple becoming unclean. That if people who behaved in unclean ways were to go into the temple, the temple itself would be defiled. When Jesus went in to clear out the money changers and the sellers of animals, we often refer to that story as the cleansing of the temple. That's what that's all about. So for the Pharisees, the idea of clean and unclean and what to do and how to maintain ritual cleanliness was very important. And so they challenged Jesus on this point. But think about this for a moment. The Gospel story was written about 2,000 years ago. The writings of Leviticus and Numbers and the other places in the Old Testament, those were written perhaps two and a half to 3,000 years ago. We've only known about germs and viruses and such things for about 150 years now. How did they know? What were they doing? They must have noticed that if you touch someone who has leprosy, you had the possibility of catching leprosy. They must have noticed that if you eat certain foods, you have a greater possibility of getting sick. They must have noticed that by staying apart from each other and by washing hands, people stayed healthier. But how would they explain it? There were certain patterns of living that if they lived them, they seemed to be receiving protection and blessings. So those must be something that were within their relationship with God. They were not wrong. They didn't understand the full picture. But their faithfulness did protect them. And so the patterns of what to eat, what not to eat, what to touch, what to do if you touch something you shouldn't touch, those became a part of the religious faith. They became not just hygiene, but religious purity, an essential part of faithfulness. And this is what the Pharisees were asking about. And Jesus answered them in two ways. He said, it's not washing hands that makes you clean or unclean. It's not even what you eat. It's what comes from the mouth. It is what you say because what you say comes from the heart. From out of the heart, Jesus said, come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. He also challenged him on the idea of the tradition of the elders, how some parts of the tradition allowed people to go against the commandments of God. And so we come to a question in our own day. All these things about washing hands and social distancing and wearing masks, are those from God or are those commandments of the elders? They are perhaps both. All of our understanding of what God wants of us is human understanding, but we still need to sort through the human understanding to understand what 
God wants of us. But it does come from the heart. We wash our hands because we care. We keep distance because we care. We wear masks because we care. And it's because we care about ourselves, that we may keep ourselves healthy, and each other when we are face to face, but it's something greater than that. It's a concern for the community. When we start thinking about caring on large scales, we're thinking about justice. We're thinking about the well-being of other people as well. The Pharisees lived by rules, and they were strict rules, and to a large extent they were good rules. Jesus also offered rules. The primary rules, he said, the greatest commandments were to love God and to love one another. The Christian community through the years has developed those rules, and, and our reading from Romans today might give us some sense of what those rules might be. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. These are the rules that come from the heart. These are the rules that come from love and faithfulness. I remember back in March, in one of the first messages that I recorded, I said that we were facing a great challenge, but we were also seeing something very wonderful. That thousands of people and millions of people and hundreds of millions of people were working together to control a common challenge. They were caring for each other. It has proved to be a great challenge, but I will still say that it is a wonderful thing to see the community that goes beyond even communities of faith to caring people everywhere. I'd like to share one more bit of a reading from Romans 12. This is just past the part I read earlier today, but I think it's worth considering in the coming months. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Let us pray. A loving God, help us to understand the rules of love, the rules of faith, Help us to sort through our human traditions and find what is good and follow. Help us to let love be genuine. Help us to hold fast to what is good. Help us to love one another with mutual affection. Help us to contribute to the needs of the saints. Help us to extend hospitality to strangers. May we find joy in following your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.